beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed the cost dimension. Hallelujah. This word cost and price. These are two words that many believers hate. We hate that word. The moment you say cost or price, people just resent it and they get angry. But when you say gift or reward, people say, aha, this is what I want. But the moment you say cost, we hate opening up ourselves to the cost implication of life. Unfortunately, let me tell you the truth. Get it straight and get it this night. I don't care who preaches what for you. Don't mislead yourself. You will never, never enter the realm of true greatness and extraordinary accomplishments if you deny the fact that there is a price and there is a cost. So the first thing I want you to know this night is that extraordinary accomplishment is very costly. It's very costly. It's not just costly. It's very costly. Number two, ignorance and failure is also very costly. So whether you embrace the life that will bring supernatural accomplishments or not, you are going to pay the price in this life. Period. Hallelujah. Outstanding success had a, a huge price tag. It's very costly. Failure also has a price tag. It is also costly. The difference is this. For accomplishment and success, you pay the price before it comes. For failure, you pay the price after it comes. You get that? But you are going to pay the price in any way. So you can choose to pay it now. You don't need to say, I claim success. No, you don't need to claim it. If you pay the price now, that is your act of faith to show that you have chosen. You don't just choose by saying, I choose alone. He said, if you call yourself the sons of Abraham, you would do what Abraham did. Hallelujah. People hate the word cost. They hate the word price. And so many people, especially preachers, have tried to create nice messages to explain away the fact that there is a cost implication to supernatural accomplishment. Let me tell you something. Go and ask any man, whether in the secular world or in the Christendom, who has risen to and made any level of supernatural accomplishment of whatever sort. Ask them and they will tell you there is a price to pay. 
Hallelujah. The one time wealthiest man in America was asked a question. He said, what is the secret of success? And he laughed. He said, secret number one, know what the price is. Number two, pay the price. Period. Know what it is. Pay the price. And tonight, I pray for you that the fear of paying the price for a supernatural life, let that fear leave you. Because let me tell you something. You are afraid of what must come. So it's better to develop courage and face it once and for all. Remember we preached a message, give me this mountain. In every mountain there are giants. If you find a mountain that there are no giants, run away. Every mountain there are giants. Life is full of men who paid several prices, defied certain things. And today the world is celebrating them. And if you must do much for God, there is a price to pay. Don't let anybody fool you. There is a price to pay. Hallelujah. And tonight we will look at the cost factor, the cost implication. Hallelujah. If we do not want to end up like many people that we have seen or many believers frustrated, humiliated, then it's important to pay the price right now. I will always quote this scripture, Lamentations 3, 27. He said, it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Now that you have strength, why don't you make up your mind to flog it out with destiny? So that you can enter the Sabbath and rest once and for all. The Bible says, and on the seventh day, God rested. I've said it again and again. If you have not entered your seventh day and you are resting, let me tell you, life will kick you out of that rest in a painful way. You only rest when you have entered your seventh day. Some from day one, they are already seeking rest. We live in a generation of comfort. We like comfort. Hallelujah. A lot of people like comfort. We love comfort. We hate inconvenience. No, no. Don't keep me standing for 10 minutes. Uh -uh, I can't take it. Ah, the sun is too hot. Go and buy an umbrella for me. We, we, we are addicted to comfort. To, a, to a, a degree that it is robbing us of paying the price for a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Someone starts a business. The first profit that comes is buying jeans and shoe and buying one, one rickety car that you keep maintaining it for the next how many years until everything eats up his money but to pay the price and say oh let me just wait let me endure no i want to prove a point i want to prove a point comfort comfort has destroyed a lot of people comfort is good but you see let me tell you something when it gets to a point where it stops you from paying the price then you are you are eating your future in your today and this is the case with a lot of people hallelujah this is what has birthed this false and fake life that people live they try to pretend realms of success they have not yet come into and so they put themselves under unnecessary pressure hallelujah it's very important say after me i will pay the price please say it i will pay the price look at me don't you think this message is not important this night because i am going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment they think it's not spiritual enough i thought we just came and we should be praying or i thought we should come and do this sooner or later your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you backslide spiritually without knowing hallelujah when you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night 
you have the fees of children to pay is that true you have responsibilities at that point you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit it takes keys and opening up yourself to them may your children never look at you and say daddy what is what is the benefit of all of this christianity may people not look at you in the village and say you are you are an unbeliever i am a christian what is the difference see let me tell you something the kingdom of god is a reward system are you following me now the kingdom of god operates on a reward system so you are rewarded for complying with kingdom principles i made up my mind years ago that i was going to end some things in my life forever and i knew that to do that comfort will be out of the way and this is my first encouragement for you this night take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort it's not bad pack it up and keep it a day will come when you will be comfortable indeed not now the bible says the vision will speak at the end no vision speaks at the beginning it says it in the end it will speak hallelujah another deceitful approach to success is waiting for god to do everything have you seen people like that i know god would do it i know my god would do it are you not the king of the heavens you can do anything you want to do you can bless whoever you want to bless you can curse whoever you want to curse let me tell you straight to the point if that is your philosophy then your suffering has not yet begun the bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the lord he said but the earth has he given to the sons of men if you do not take charge of your destiny you may be very surprised hallelujah i'm going to be talking about three aspects three levels of the cost number one we'll quickly look at the spiritual cost the first cost is the spiritual cost you want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments no matter who you are the first price to pay is your spiritual life the spiritual cost hallelujah there are many of you right now if i ask you what are you doing towards your success you say i'm trying to look for money i'm looking for capital may god just bless me let me just get money and see what i will do or somebody is running somewhere say i'm just trying to look for a job i'm trying to look for this and we pay very little attention if at all for some of us our spiritual lives we wake up in the morning 5 30 stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning hurrying running from morning until night ask them what they are looking for they tell you i want to move forward i want to make progress i want to make meaning out of my life but the bible says except the lord builds the house he said the word there is not except the lord build it for you except the lord becomes the architect of the house he says they labor in vain and except the lord watches over his city said the watchman watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he give it to his beloved sleep hallelujah let's look at the scripture quickly second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 if you're there say amen Verse 5. Are you there? Verse 5. It says, 
This is speaking about the king Uzziah. Listen please. He said, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And he said, oh, I thought it was projected. He said, as, and as long as he sought God, what happened? God made him prosper. Is that in your Bible? As long as he sought God, what happened? So his prosperity, his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion, genuine passion for God. Many of us do not have a passion for God. We only love God because we have been told that he is mighty. And if you come close to him, maybe he will drive demons away from your life. And then success will come quickly. If you want to be blessed and to do much for God in this kingdom, the first requirement is your spiritual life. Uzziah, he sought God. He says, as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Let's read on. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God. Look at his accomplishments. Look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him. And the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him against the philistines and against the arabians who dwelt in gubal and in milnim and the ammonites gave gifts to uzziah look at all the things that happened in his life because he sought god let's read on and his name spread abroad this is the fame many people are looking for and his name why he sought god he sought the health of his spiritual life first he was not just seeking fame and power. In the Bible, everyone who truly sought God made a mark in this life. Listen to me. The first cost is your spiritual life. Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at this accomplishment. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid. Whatever you build, if you are not careful, but he said he built towers in a desert. Extraordinary accomplishments because he sought God hallelujah and he dig many wells for he had much cattle both in Shephela and in the plains husband men also and vine dressers in the mountains and so on and so forth read verse 11 he said moreover Uzziah had a host of fighting men who is this strange man that was just breaking records smashing records again and again Find the things that had been done in his days. The Bible tells us his secret. He said he sought God. He sought God. Look at this kind of exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits. It doesn't just happen by magic. Let's finish up. We'll read to verse 15. Who went out to war by bands according to the numbers of their reckonings by the hand of Jael, the scribe, hallelujah and then let's read verse um, 14 and Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the hosts shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones verse 15 and he made in Jerusalem what engines the first person in the Bible recorded to invent engines this guy broke through in several circles the Bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they used engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows 
and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price oh there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so per adventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health to the proportion to which your soul prospereth we have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul our intimacy and our relationship there are many things that can distract us looking for money looking for success wanting connection wanting to go here and there wanting to go abroad germany italy dubai everybody wants to go let me tell you something if you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are say i take my spiritual life seriously the spiritual cost under the spiritual cost the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom everybody say revelation you want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom we're talking about your spiritual cost now revelation and wisdom paul prayed to the church especially in uh, uh, the, the the church in 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 in, in ephesus ephesians 1 from verse 17 down he said i pray to the god of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the heart of your understanding the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know revelation and wisdom what is wisdom wisdom is the ability to take the truth of god's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life is not advancing the kingdom is not improving the quality of your life dump it it's a waste of time wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge it's the ability to take the truth of god's word and offer solution to life's problems and the bible says daniel 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens daniel 12 he said and they that be wise shall do what shall shine as the brightness you want to be a star you want to rise above get wisdom get revelation understand how things work in the spirit when you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results i promise you life will bow to you hallelujah are you listening to me so pay the price let your spiritual growth be constructive it's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages go for revelation this is what we seek to teach not revelation of stories principles keys 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 i will give you the keys of the kingdom when you find the key to this door you can open it when you find the key to this door you will open it when you find the key to that door you will open it if you do not have the door you can pretend the door is open but sooner or later life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key there are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say no look 
let's take this thing can i tell you something no matter how long find it he said the kingdom of god is like a man who is searching for a pearl when he found it he sold everything he had to buy that land when you pay the price to get revelation it will reward you please listen to me finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws health in the kingdom has spiritual laws victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws success in life has spiritual laws favor has spiritual laws they don't just happen a good marriage is governed by spiritual laws hallelujah longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws how many of these laws do you know that is how you can measure the quality of your life i want to ask you a very practical question how many of these laws do you know hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the lord with all your heart he will open you up to revelations first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for them that speak in tongues for them that love him when you love god he will open you up to secrets and brother when you find it you have found it forever when you truly love god and for as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper have you been seeking the lord in your quest for accomplishment have you been paying a, is god part of your success equation i love the lord with all my heart the bible says in first kings 3 verse 3 it says and solomon loved the lord solomon loved that's what that's that was the basis of everything that he did and solomon loved the lord do you really love the lord enough to seek him with all your heart to seek to know his ways and how do you know those who love the lord it's very clear john 14 21 so don't just say i love the lord we are going to see it now john 14 21 hallelujah he says he that keepeth my commands he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father so who is the one that loves god please listen who is it who is the one that loves god it didn't say the one who claims i love god i love god i love god uh -uh. if you truly love him you will abide by his commands he said and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and i will do what manifest reveal myself god is not revealing himself to everybody there are certain people that attract him with their passion for him this is a big secret let's look at verse 23 of the same verse same chapter sorry jesus answered and said if a man love me he will do what he will do what so have you been keeping his words if you have not been keeping his words you do not love him period if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him are you seeing there and make our habitation our abode this is the secret of intimacy love for god the bible says the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants many people let me tell you the truth many people want to serve god but they don't love the lord they respect god though they are christians they are not doing but that passion for god they don't have it and then they wonder why god seems to make himself real to other people i've shown you the secret of intimacy if you truly love the lord you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence love for god hallelujah 
let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of god without loving him no number two obedience obedience is very important everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience everything 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 in the kingdom is tied to obedience just one scripture so that we we'll put it under there deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah he said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing god in anything you are doing the bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete he told cain cain was angry because abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received he told cain he said if you do what your brother did will your sacrifice not be accepted so obedience anytime you want god to show up and to perform in your life make sure you obey his principles the last key that i'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing let me shock you very quickly tithing has nothing to do with money look at me tithing does not bring money the bible never tied tithing to money let me tell you what tithing does hallelujah sorry many people tithe because they want money wrong tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity it is your giving that brings financial increase are you hearing me tithing opens the heavens see listen listen look at me there's no time we have to touch other aspects and i want us to pray please look at me the bible says god created many trees in the garden of eden is that true but god kept a tithe in that garden of eden i want to show you where tithing started from so long as that tithe was not touched the heavens were open god could come in the cool of the day is that true please answer me tithing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens so whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper that's why tithing does not just affect finance alone health longevity different aspects of our lives the reason why we preachers only reduce tithes to money is simply because we want the money period the day man touched the tithe what happened the heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of eden look at how important tithing is to god so long as man did not touch the tithe he could enjoy any other three he touched the tithe god sent him out so every many of us are operating under close heavens you are giving but under close heavens you are serving god but under close heavens let me tell you something i don't care whatever you do see the devourer is not a demon the devourer is a principality he operates on legal grounds principalities operate on legal grounds are you hearing what i'm saying that means you can you don't pray them away you don't pray them away there are kingdom principles that keep them at bay please understand this he said in my name they shall cast out what but he said they overcame them by it is in my name many of us have been praying trying to cast away 
principalities in our lives no it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far that means if you are not a tighter even god cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three the three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithing the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be faithful i need my heavens open see when your heavens are open you will know you will know your heavens are open one time i was praying i think around chapel and the lord showed me a vision i looked up and i saw like two ancient gates they were closing and opening closing and opening i said lord what is the meaning of this and the lord told me this is the heavens opening and closing over people and this is the faithfulness of tithing please take this serious tithing does not bring money tithing opens the heavens when the heavens are open anything done under that open heavens will succeed you see why some of you have been giving you have been giving to the poor you have been giving to the needy things are not working because the heavens are closed the devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not. This is a powerful key that many, many ministries, there are many ministries who love God, great preachers, but they are living under closed heavens. So they don't know why members don't come have you seen people complain like that members come and go members do this and that i will train people and then they will leave let me tell you something check it if you are not careful the heavens are open the heavens are closed sorry when your heavens are open you will see extraordinary things that you know only god can do you can't negotiate this principle god is not a politician there's no back door no shortcut hallelujah so have you been faithful in tithing if you have not been faithful in tithing stop saying god is responsible for what you are in you have permitted the devourer there are many of us who are in business you don't tithe many of us god blesses us you don't tithe see if you do it out of force it's not by faith and whatever is not of faith is sin you just wasted your time it is a product of a revelation how can i eat the tithe of god here is my heart my mind make up your mind lord not touching your tight if you are faithful you will live in eden when you touch the tight you are sent out of eden when they sent man out of eden toiling and all kinds of things there are many of you truly it's not like god is not blessing you but it does not work the bible says and whatsoever he doeth Take this tithing thing serious. The number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing. Don't think this is a gimmick by preachers. If you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe, it's God that will punish him. But you do your part. Do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you. Say, am I sure it's not that usher that will carry my money? What is your business? make up your mind buy envelopes many of us are owing god you say god let me touch this five thousand please this is an emergency i must respond to it immediately and the devourer is saying go ahead please 
go ahead the moment you take it <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head the devourer goes and you just fall down and stand up and say thank you jesus the devourer is waiting for you the moment you come out the oppression continues i'm telling you kingdom principles supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens he said you will see the heavens open the moment the heavens are open angelic activities begin in your life when jacob saw the heavens open what happened angels started ascending and descending and jesus told nathaniel he said you are you are shouting because you have just seen these things he said you will see greater things what are the greater things you will see the heavens open and the angels every time angelic activities are scarce in your life check your heavens may be closed hallelujah number two prayer so revelation one and then prayer prayer you must pray you must pray it's one of the greatest spiritual investment now i've had preachers even on tv talk against prayer and they say pray 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 you pray you don't pray all you just need is the word 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 <laughs> listen let me tell you the honest and sincere truth the bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables i mean the ministry of uh, we will not concentrate on serving tables we will focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian period whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity the gifts of the spirit will find expression the anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life and the anointing itself is capital everybody say anointing is capital yes we only know naira and cobo and dollars and pounds to be capital anointing is big capital are you hearing me the anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open anointing is great capital all men seek for thee that's what they told jesus why were they seeking for him because he had an anointing do you know that if you have an anointing the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve you concentrate and build that capital i have entered places today that if i was not anointed there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible hallelujah prayer let's look at the second cost spirit move over me spirit move over me intellectual cost everybody say intellectual cost say it intellectual cost so the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment second cost is intellectual cost help us holy spirit isaiah 5 verse 13 everybody while you are opening i like you to shout knowledge is power not not that school a long high dogo say knowledge is power say it again knowledge is power hallelujah knowledge is truly power if you value knowledge and you value information you will do wonders in this earth realm please listen this is where i want everybody to give us our attention because i know for many of us the spiritual cost we are paying it very well but probably we are not paying the intellectual cost knowledge is power isaiah 5 verse 13 everyone read one to read therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with test why knowledge everybody say knowledge say information what you do not know can destroy you ignorance 
is not an excuse in this realm. In the world of champions, you don't give room for ignorance. Many of us are spiritually serious, but we are mentally lazy. We are not willing to pay the price. Preachers, hear me. Emoji, wake up. Many preachers are intellectually lazy and they wonder why they are not commanding results. Hallelujah. Sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information. Your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador, whether business, whether your job, there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues, they are paying spiritual prices, but they are neglecting their intellectual price. Look at me. See, honesty is good, but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results. Competence is key, and competence is a product of intellectual prowess. Are you listening to me? Many Nigerians have dreams and visions. There are many books. Dream big. Have a great vision. That's wonderful. But just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass. You must, re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs. Everybody say intellectual cost. Ignorance is very costly. I told you. Very, very costly. He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. This book of the law, the Bible says, this book, not this chase magazine, not this pointless novel, this book many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity somebody comes and say god is calling me i'm going to be a public speaker i saw it in a vision i saw myself wearing suit like pastor femi you may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready you think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't you've not read any book on public speaking you don't know anybody hallelujah you're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you. You will never arrive there. This is what will frustrate you more. Many Christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying, although they love God, they see that they are lazy intellectually. Go to the house of many believers. You don't find anything. Somebody is working in his job. He's never read any book to improve him does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah Praise the Lord. It's very important. Many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually. You believe God is calling you to be a reality a TV show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever. And you sit down, people ask you, what do you know about marriage? Is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife. Do you know, listen, listen, see, no matter how tongue-talking you are are you hearing me if i want to employ people and i see that you are going your your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation do you think i'll employ you please answer me so why are you angry with god there are many people who are not interested listen this is important they are not interested in building themselves they don't build capacity how many books do you have in the area you believe God is sending you to? See, let me tell you. We live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen. There must be an added advantage. 
the difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil there are many people who go into business they don't know anything about the business they just hear somebody went to dubai and went and brought containers you too you stand up carry everything you have home and abroad they go and throw you away from the airport say you are going to dubai they seize all of your goods now you come back god is not faithful i'm a titan no no everybody say intellectual prowess psalms 45 verse 4 can we look at it quickly we're going to pray psalm 45 verse 4 God is doing something in this place. He said, listen, and in thy majesty, write prosperously because of what? Truth. Information. Write prosperously because of the truth that you know. Write prosperously. Bishop Oedeko said something that touched me in a very powerful way. He said, most restaurants, you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old the owner has died yet the restaurant is still on in nigeria somebody opens a restaurant after two two years he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant and the person is a christian everybody say after me your intellect your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally i tell you i i feel the fire of god in this place i must burn this enough buy books buy books not trainers buy books not with on buy books not mary Kay. the books will buy you mary Kay. See, he said, buy the truth. Sell it not. There are certain things I do every day before I sleep. Every day. Some of you sleep from morning till night. You are just happy. Lazing around. You come and see people reading and you say, oh boy, you said, now wow, what are you reading? You keep distracting people. There is a name for those people. They are called enemies of progress. How many of us pay attention? There are many of us visitation, hopping from house to house, hopping to people's office, gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future. Great men, hear me, are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds. That you are a Christian is no guarantee for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy. They give you a speech to prepare. You didn't prepare for it. You are not serious about it. God has brought favor. Lack of intellectual preparation killed the favor out of your life. Hallelujah. There are many of you. Oh, God is calling me into decoration. What do you know about decoration? How many books? Show me the DVDs you are watching. About those who, have, who are champions in decoration. And you come and just keep sleeping 30 pieces of paper for people. Please give me a contract. I am a Christian. I'm your member. So what? So what? Oh, I can make hair. Don't patronize that person. He's an unbeliever. Patronize me. The person patron. He said, plot me all back. You plot like this. Yet, you think that the person will just say, okay, you are a nice Christian. Are you contending to improve yourself? I improve myself every day. I'm not satisfied with where I am. In every area of my life. Show me what you are doing to build your mind. Show me the investments you are making mentally. And I can tell you whether you will be part of the world changers. Or you will be part of the storytellers. Are you listening to me? Very important. Lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to build my mind. I will buy books. I will buy DVDs. I will build myself in the area I've been called to function. I will be the best. I will not relent 
until I am the best. Say, I will not relent. I refuse to be a local champion. I'm a global champion. Hallelujah. Yes. Make up your mind. Refuse to be a local champion. A brother is, is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000. So they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration. You just did every kind of ugly thing and they say, who did this? They say, you. They say, oh, well done. You just believe that another time you say, I'm carrying a proposal to Abuja. You carry your file and you are moving to go and disgrace yourself in Abuja. When you go there, you will see other people who have worked upon themselves. When you see their designs, you just stand there as if God failed you. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Believers, build yourself. Every day, there are four things I do until, before I sleep. I must build myself spiritually. I must build myself corporately. I must build myself in leadership. What are you doing? What do you do with your 24 hours? Many of you early in the morning, they saw you in Samaru. Later on, you are in Haindogo. Later on, you are around. And you just come and say, I'm, I'm, I had a busy day. Doing busy but doing nothing. Nothing. You went to go and gossip. Jakes, Kajikwa. You now run to another person. You did this. Stop it if you have been doing that. Great leaders are not like that. If somebody comes and is disturbing you, don't be afraid to tell the person, sorry, I'm doing some studies. I'm praying. Some of you are embarrassed. You don't want to be bad. Ah. Create a protocol around your life. Let nobody just jump in and out of your life because they think they want to see you. You are studying. At that point, illumination is coming. Somebody just bash it in. Over everything for the boys. Politely tell the person, I'm, I'm in a period, I'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to Mount Ararat and take them to a place where they will be great. Do you not know, Samadhi Ami says, ideas rule the world. There are many of you, if only you pay attention, the truth is God tried for you. You are very intelligent. You are just not serious. You can't sit down and pay the price. And you know something? Listen. The truth is, if you really, really want to be great, God will open the way for you. The reason is many of us do not want it bad enough. That's why the way has not opened. I don't care what it is you want. If you desire it truly, it said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. There is a level of passion. When I want things, I get them. Oh yes, I get them. I will pay any price to get it. For me, pain is not an issue. Hallelujah. When I travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking, I get a biro. I'm just listening to them. Ardently. Or I'm just typing on my phone. I'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing. While I'm listening, I'm reaching out to my pocket, finding any seat there to connect. You see, let me tell you, I, I taught this already in commanding results, the law of honor. Things do not just happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Things are made to happen. The truth is, whatever area it is you are trusting God to go to, there are people who are carriers of that grace. There are people who have that knowledge. You want to plot. You believe you want to start a saloon. Have you gone to somebody who has, who has a saloon and tell the person, see, I have 2,000 Naira. Can I give you this 2,000 Naira and be coming every day and be learning for one hour? I plead with you. Say me. I started plotting somebody. This, all these people, this arrogance is what has kept a lot of people. Humility. If you do not humble yourself, you will never build your mind. Don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you. Doctors don't look for sick people. They establish an institution called a hospital. And the sick people look for them passionately. And even in the hospital, there are different kinds of words. According to your desperation, there is a word called emergency word. When you really need help badly, they take you to that word. Life has emergency word. There are many people who you can get tired of your life. 
that you say no i'm not going to any i'm going to an emergency world build yourself build yourself oh god wants to make me a pastor and god showed me in a vision i'm going to have 1000 branches my brother start getting going for knowledge before you die early the trouble of managing yourself is even killing you and you want to manage 1000 branches full of members see this is why god does not answer the prayer of a lot of people they they want crowd they do not know the complexities that come with managing people every day there is a case somewhere somewhere this is what was wearing moses away and his father jethro in law um, uh, his father in law jethro began to give him a key on how to he would have died for nothing there are many men of god who are dying because they are doing everything everything because they do not understand the principle everybody say i receive grace to build my mind jordan bookstore is there you can start let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business let me see your hands business people whether potentially or presently what are you doing in that line of business keep your hands lifted so that i will what are you doing are you doing anything or you are just coveting other people who have gone ahead and say hey god oh, this is lucky oh. please drop your hands take it seriously you want to do business behave like a businessman don't behave like a thief how many of you believe that god has called you into one form of leadership or the other whether corporately almost everybody should be lifting their hands you are either a father or a mother at least what are you doing to build? no i'm serious what are you doing to build it i build myself every day i interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest i love everybody but i will not learn from everybody i want to shorten my journey as much as possible so i'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me then after many years go for the best say go for the best tell your neighbor go for the best don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people you know your brother is good but the truth is he cannot sing very well you want to be a musician collect his own tape so that he won't feel angry but go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward a man of god who is not a businessman doesn't know anything about business is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense he's a good man of god but a bad businessman and a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back love your pastor honor your pastor if he's not a businessman look for a businessman and listen to him hallelujah finally the third cost is the physical cost if you're angry with me that's a sign that god is working on you seriously you know i won't stop no way physical cost the third one it takes diligence and work not necessarily hard work but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments look at me everybody say laziness say one more time laziness for the last time laziness is not my portion in jesus name if you want to accomplish things supernaturally extraordinary accomplishments three things must suffer momentarily in your life number one your time number two your energy number three your resources the proof of love the clearest proof of love is the investment of time you must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough how much time are you putting on ground how much energy energy everybody say energy 
see great people in life are workaholics are you hearing me they walk their life out until they enter that realm of greatness praise god i've been ministering in the last three weeks traveling ministering doing a lot of things but it does not stop me from doing the things i have to do hallelujah from this place i have another trip again traveling up and down yet you must give your energy everybody say energy some of you like sleep once it's 9 30 you're already nodding even if you are talking with somebody you just do like this and the next thing you are sleeping no no if you love sleep you will kill your, your future put your legs inside cold water and said my eyes you can sleep if you want to sleep but my life must move forward if you make that determination no devil in existence will stop you physical efforts there are some of us who are lazy you hate pain you hate anything discomforting you you hate embarrassment right now as i'm talking you're feeling embarrassed why are you embarrassing us see every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment where you open up your heart and say flog me just lash it let it come to build me many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us either because you're a pretty lady or you're a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change proverbs 14 verse 23 We'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray your destiny must move forward in the name of jesus proverbs 14 verse 23 let's read together one to read in all what in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips cheap talk there are many people that talk 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 but the Bible says in all labor put your talk to work in all labor there is profit but the talk of the leaves tended to what penury back your talk with tremendous efforts and tell yourself no matter what it will cost me say in the name of Jesus no matter what it will cost me I am prepared to pay the price to be the best in my field in the area god has called me i will be outstanding i will pay the price the price of time the price of energy the price of my resources some of you are on scholarship students a few of you god is blessing you fifty thousand or seventy five thousand or your five or ten thousand is coming every time you get it you are always running to the restaurant every time you get it boys it don't land you can't be great that way you can't be great that way so you create a momentary feeling of being successful why don't you pay the price and create the real one stop pretending like you are there when you are not there if your capacity has not reached for indomie take gary and use them I, I, are you following me now if your capacity has not reached for baked beans get the normal one shake off all those things from it and cook it give him thanks knowing that it will change there are too many people living fake lives fake lives you create an impression you do not have the resources to defend somebody comes you see my watch now you say i must buy this kind of watch you go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself and you are suffering alone and god will say so it when you buy it and that's frustration for you see let me tell you say after me there is time for everything say it be careful what you covet about people and don't put yourself under pressure you don't need to prove a point to anybody if you have only one trouser that has torn sew it honorably and wear it let the people laugh very well so that when you become great they won't they won't say it's magic they saw you 
Some of you will charter a car from Samaru to Sabo. You say, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Hurry for what? 250 naira that you can buy a book. You have not gotten to that level. Be patient. The jeep will come. Nobody is arguing it. But it won't come now. Pay the price. Sister, you will buy the human hair. For now, use what is available. Use what is available. Don't carry 10,000 and spend it. And you are just moving around. Fake lives. Use that, that resource to build yourself. Say amen. amen. If your own has not reached for Shagalinku, go to Zinc House. Go to Com Market. Go anywhere. Be honorable about it. There was a time it was Zinc House we used to go to. That was, that was our level. And let me tell you in all sincerity, even at that level, we were better than a lot of people. By that means, it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there was there were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today, you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that day, you start suffering. Nothing else about your life. Stop pretending it. You will get there one day. For now, invest in yourself. waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up proverbs 10 verse 4 he becometh poor that deals with what? A slack, a lazy, a slothful hand. He said, but the hand of the diligent will do what? The hand of the diligent will bless him. And with that resource, he will be able to do big things for the kingdom. Next scripture. Proverbs 12 verse 24. The hand of the diligent again. God sees scriptures about hands. About hands. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. In other words, shall lead. The hand of the diligent will take him above. He will take charge. He will dominate. He will break records. He will set the pace. But the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price. Shall be under tribute. One last scripture. Proverbs 20 verse 4. Above all. The sluggard will not plow. And what is his excuse? There is cold. Therefore shall he do what? Therefore shall he do what? Now is the time to sow. Many people, let me tell you. Thank God you are hearing this now. Because there are people who think you are wasting your time. I promise you. They will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come. It's not a false prophecy. It's the truth about life. Many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents. True or false? Where were our parents when they were paying the price? And they get angry when they see them. This is what happens to poor people when they don't pay the price and they see others that go ahead see every time you accomplish supernatural things you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results Are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension? I've shown you how. These are keys. Your eatery can be the best. God didn't lie when he spoke to you. Are you hearing me? Your business can be the best. Your ministry can be the best. Your life, that book 
can be a bestseller. You just need to find out. Find out from those whose books have been bestsellers. You wrote your book. It was great. But it was not a bestseller yet. Find out. God has told you that he's putting the word of the Lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations. As it is, nobody knows you. Go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing. Pay the price. And I tell you, if, if I were a prophet, if that God called me into the prophetic ministry, I would have done things that would shock people. Many people are not ready to pay the price. Everything is available, but there is a price tag on it. If you can pay it, carry it. The best car in the world is still on sale. If you have the money today, you can go and order it. Nobody will stop you. All the packages in life, according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability. Every time I stand before Koinonia, I don't see. See, let me tell you, a time will come. The people you see today will be the ushers in ENI. Just the ushers. Because I know there is a world dying that cannot resist the solution we are bringing. Impossible. Our job is to contend for greater grace. Oh my God, I'm a success. Hallelujah. I have the capital of the anointing. I have the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God in me. And I will pay that price. Rise up on your feet. I bring you words of comfort. It will not always remain like this. Your life will change. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Supernatural accomplishments. Extraordinary accomplishments. Like Uzziah. Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get here. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. Inspire yourself. I cannot be a failure. And David encouraged himself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we are going to pray three prayer points. First is your spiritual life. How many of you know the anointing is capital? I've shared it with you now. The anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life that your, your business for, for 10 years cannot give. I, why are you neglecting it? And one river came out of Eden. It parted itself into dimensions. You are going to pray. Say, Lord, I value your presence. I value your anointing. That anointing, I take it like a capital. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. The anointing. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. Power to heal the sick. Power to deliver the oppressed. Access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great. I refuse to be an ordinary preacher. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Walking in signs and wonders that will confound men. I'm stepping into deep dimensions of power, of grace. I respect your anointing. I respect your anointing, oh God. Pray. You need the capital of the anointing. You need the capital.
title of the Holy Ghost, the greatest gift. And the Bible says the gift of a man, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the anointing. They told Jesus, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. Rich men seek for thee. Blessed people seek for you because of what you carry. If you carry grace, they will look for you. If you carry power, they will look for you. If you carry unction, they will look for you. If you carry fire, they will look for you. They will invite you. They will sow into your life. They will bless you. My spiritual life, I receive your fire, oh God. It's not a waste, it's a glorious investment that will separate you regardless of your lineage, regardless of your barrier, regardless of any factor. There is a world dying out there. They need the anointing. They are willing to honor it. They are willing to invest in it. They are willing to reward it. When you become anointed, you will be above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. During my birthday, I was amazed at all the gifts that I got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation. Many who have been blessed by the grace. Anointing is capital. Get this revelation. When you pay the price, if you get authentic grace, there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something. There are some of you right now. You came here. You left different places. You package seeds. Some gifts in kind. In cash. You are waiting for the grace to sow. Years ago, you were still alive. But you did not come to me. Because there was no grace. That means if I increase the grace. A time will come. I will start attracting a kind of people. Anointing is capital. Hear me. He said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows. I hardly pay for things in my life right now. I hardly pay for anything. Because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me. That's what the anointing can do in your life. Stop struggling. Go for the anointing. Go for grace. Go for fire. Go for power. And see the way it will raise you. All other factors notwithstanding. There are people who would never listen to me. But they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life. My age notwithstanding. It has opened doors for me. My age notwithstanding. My level of exposure notwithstanding. Do you know that the anointing is capital? It can end inferiority in your life. When you have something, men will come to drink of it. He said, Gentiles will come to my life. Prayer point number two. You're going to say, Lord, I've been intellectually lazy. I don't buy books. I don't read. But I repent this night. And I begin to build myself. I study by books. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I go for books. I go for tapes. I sit down with relevant materials along the area that I'm trusting lights to break forth for me. Shatatata tabaka. Koinonia pray. Koinonia pray. He said, Then shall your life break forth. Then shall your life break forth. The power of information. If you know what to do, greatness is yours for the taking. If you know what to do, and Uzziah invented engines. Pray, my mind is blessed. I am not God. Pray, I speak.
study books. I buy exercise books. I study every day. I sit under mentors. I sit under men that carry the things I need. Whether in business, whether in leadership, there are men who have gone ahead already. Listen to them. Receive mentorship from them through books, through tapes. Prophesy to yourself. I'm an extraordinary leader. I'm an extraordinary entrepreneur. I'm an extraordinary business businessman. I will shake this country with my ideas. I will shake this country. Go ahead and prophesy. I will do what has not been done before. I will create a new wave in the financial world, in the labor world, in the IT world, in the art world. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Last prayer point. Look at me. Last prayer point. You're going to pray and ask the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, give me such grace that I will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment. These two things. If you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment, I salute you because you must be a world champion. Pain, embarrassment, these two things. If you are still conscious of pain, whether in the cold, whether in the rain, you will invest time, you will invest energy, you will invest resources. Lift your voice and pray. Let pain, oh God, not be an issue for your people. May they know no pain. May they know no pain. May they be men fearless, men strong, men of grace, men of audacity, men of audacity who will poke their eyes, their hands in the eyes of the enemy. Men of faith, fearless, courageous, strong. Brother Sai, say I can make it. I can make it. Yes, I can burn that idea. Great men are those who have survived much pain. Great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive. Great men are men who have endured. Great men are men who have tried and didn't stop. They fell, didn't stop. They were weak, didn't stop until they emerged as champions. Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some, even your eyes have been plucked. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. The Bible says, is there hope for a tree? Although it be cut short. I bring you a word of hope. If the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root, he only wasted his time. Because God will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond. Hallelujah. So get books. Get tapes. Get serious. You know any of your friend that is not serious? Don't criticize them. Encourage them in love. For many of you who Satan is using your yesterday against you, right now, I silence the voice of that accuser of the brethren because the Bible says that judgment has been declared upon him. Your mistakes of yesterday 
cannot follow you into your tomorrow there is a brand new day you can rise again you can glow again you are still that champion nothing is missing nothing is broken the miracle is not in what you have lost the miracle is in what you have left if you have cares to share and two legs to walk again you will fall again you will become a mighty tree the power of god is a derivative of his word when you want to experience the power of God, it comes at the instance of His Word. Habakkuk chapter 3, when you read from verse 3 and 4, a scripture that has blessed me very much, particularly verse 4. The Amplified Rendition says that there was light that emanated, the brightness of the light that came from the horns, from His hand. And it says, in that light was the hiding place of His power. So when the light of God comes, His power comes to honor that light. The assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word does not look like a lie. So without the word, the anointing has no assignment. The assignment of the word of God is to validate that which has come from the word. When the word of God comes, then His power can now find its place. In the midst of his people are we learning the bible records that moses had a very interesting encounter and in exodus chapter 25 please turn there we'll hurry up for the sake of time let's begin our reading from verse 10 moses was an ins was instructed by god himself and he was told to build an ark thou shall make an ark of shitting wood he says two cubits and all of that and he gave all of the dimensions the extended reading is down to verse 22 and you'll see that he was instructed to construct an ark made of very precious wood and the remaining part of it is history we see that eventually that ark would be a representation of his presence to the nation of israel and in the presence of that ark they wrought victory to a point where the hidden nations took note of the fact that every time they came to battle especially carrying the ark victory was guaranteed they so feared the ark they would tell themselves who could stand against this god of the hebrews because the ark was a representation of the presence of god god in the midst of his people god in the midst of his people now i'm not i'm not here to deal with the entire exegesis of the whole story around the construction of the ark and so on and so forth i just want to show you the principle of victory by carrying the ark because this is a miracle service so i want to help us even as we prepare for what god is going to be doing tonight to understand how you can perpetually walk in victory by understanding the implication of carrying the ark Hallelujah. The ark was a mysterious object that hosted the presence of God and brought great victory. They were not even allowed to open it and see it because of how sacred it was. But then the ark also was a mysterious weapon of destruction and a mysterious weapon of victory. It seemed to be able to destroy without mercy and to bring victory completely. What sort of a mysterious object was this? Carried on the shoulder of priests. It would wrought victory for them even in the time of war. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 4, for the sake of time we may not go there but let me just give you the story chapter 4 chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 of first samuel it gives us a very serious detail now this was at the time theologically or historically speaking 
this was at the time when Eli, there were many compromises that were happening in the temple. Are we Bible students? He had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And these gentlemen were carrying out all kinds of atrocities in the temple. And the Bible notes that their father, who was a priest, was aware. Many times he was cautioned, but then he didn't seem to pay attention at all. And then God sent a prophet to come to Eli and to warn him to say because of this that has happened destruction is imminent the nation of israel is going to suffer because of this that you have done by the time we get to first samuel chapter 4 we see that the philistines came to battle and then the nation of israel went there and they were so defeated they were defeated in a way that was it brought great ca there was casualty and they returned back and requested they said look let's go to shiloh and there carry the ark and come with it and even though they brought the ark they were still defeated in fact the bible says it when you read chapter 4 the bible says as soon as the people saw the ark they began to rejoice thinking it will bring them victory and even with the ark there because of the state of their heart. Remember what we dealt with yesterday? So the ark is not just a magical weapon that works anyhow. It depends on many factors that must be put in place. Because they carried the same ark to battle. And the Philistines defeated them. And then the ark was captured. We are Bible students, isn't it? Yes. Then came a report to Eli who was about 97 years old he was an old man who was sitting and they brought him report they said the ark of the Lord has been captured and in that process your sons Hophni and Phinehas have died but that was not even his concern as soon as he heard that the ark of the Lord was captured the Bible says he fell and because he was an old man he broke his neck and died there and as soon as that report got to the wife of Phinehas, the Bible records that she was already pregnant and almost due with child. As soon as she had that labor kitten immediately, and she pushed and gave birth, and in her pain, she named the child E. Cabot. And he said, because the glory of the Lord has departed. If the ark has been taken, then it means there is no possibility of victory for this nation. And she named her child as a memorial that Israel had lost everything. That the departure of the ark was also the departure of the glory. The departure of the relevance of Israel. Are we together? Let's read chapter 5. Chapter 5 of First Samuel. Now arise, O oh Lord, would you come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we close in your righteousness, we celebrate. Hallelujah. Will it be projected? Okay. Let me just use my Bible. So the Philistines captured the ark and they were happy. Watch this now. I will just rush and then we'll read some part. I'd like us to read verse five because, uh, chapter 5 because it's very important. Now, they captured the ark in chapter 4 and they were rejoicing. <laughs> they took the ark and they went and kept it in their midst. And the Bible says, trouble started for them immediately. That they carried that ark just thinking it was an object. And they started to die. All kinds of destruction started happening in their camp. No one was saying anything, but there was such destruction that was happening. But one of it that was very very important the bible says 5 verse 1 let me read it says and the philistines took the ark of god is is very brief it's just 12 12 verses the philistines took the ark of god and brought it from ebenezer unto ashdod and when the philistines took the ark of god 
And they brought it to the house of their God called Dagon. And they set it by Dagon, the Bible says, verse 3. And when they of Ashdod rose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen to his face before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and set him in his place again. A God that cannot raise himself up. How can he raise other people up? You see how unwise idol worship is? He fell just from the top to the ground. And you want to lift people out of the pit. And when they rose up early in the morning, behold, that God was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palm of his hands were cut off from the threshold. Only the stumps of Dagon was left unto him. Therefore, neither the priest of, Dragon, of Dagon nor any of them that came to Dagon's house tread upon on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. He says, but the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them. They took the ark to the wrong place, desecrated it, kept it carelessly. And God said, my presence does two things. It can bless and it can destroy. Depending on how the state of your heart, the hand of the Lord came in honor to that ark and the Bible says it destroyed them and smote them. When you read verse 7, when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, the ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us. For his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon. My goodness, my God. That means something can happen to you that the devil can say, go, go away. Look, at these people are negotiating. They took something that they did not understand the implication of. And now they started having a meeting among themselves. What is this trouble we have brought to ourselves? Let's find a way of taking it out of this place. The Bible says they gathered all the lords of the Philistines, verse 8, unto them and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto God. When you read on, they took it to God. And after they carried it, the hand of the Lord came upon that city, descended upon the city, and started causing havoc within that city. It was a great destruction, verse 9 says. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And then the ark of the Lord was taken to Ekron. And when they got to Ekron, the Ekronites started crying, saying, They have brought about the ark of the God of Israel to us, to slay us and our people. So they gathered together the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel. Let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. And the hand of God was heavy there. And the men that died, and the men that died not were smitten with the emeralds. And the cry of the city went up to heaven. Now, when you read all of this, you find out that everywhere the ark of God was mismanaged with dishonor and lack of discernment. If the ark was not neutral, it was either blessing or cursing. They carried the ark and thought it would be an artifact that they would keep. And God said, no, this is a representation of my presence. I instructed Moses himself. And he carried that ark and took it in a wrong place and it caused havoc. Now for time's sake, when you read chapter 6, and then you go to chapter 7 particularly. The people began to cry. And Samuel the prophet came and told them. He said, look. The reason why the beauty and the potential. The power, the protection of this ark. Is not working. Is because of the state of your heart. If you will repent and acknowledge. And, and give up this your gods. All of these gods of the Philistines that you've gotten now. If you will take them away. Then... 
you will have your relationship restored paraphrasing samuel verse 7 and 3 samuel spake unto all the house of israel saying if ye do return unto the lord with all your hearts and put away the strange gods of Ashtaroth among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines and the people responded and they said Balaam and Ashtaroth we will not serve you again we will serve the Lord only and he gathered them together and the Bible lets us know that when they got to Mizpah, the news got among the Philistines that these people had come again but they did not know that the state of their hearts were now correct. And so the Philistines came as before. Don't mind the act that they had. Didn't they have it before? It did not work. This time around there was utter defeat. They defeated the Philistines and chased them down. Because their hearts were right. You see why we took our time to deal with the desire of David. The presence of God. Desiring the presence of God has implications. The Bible records that there was great defeat for the Philistines and the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored, verse 14 says, from Ekron even to Gath. It delivered everything and there was peace between the Israel and the Amorites because the ark was restored and their hearts were also restored. Can I tell you this? From scripture we see that the ark brought great victory. When the state of the heart, the careers of that ark, their relationship with God was put in place, the ark was able to produce wonders in their lives. Now, my concern tonight is not really the ark. My concern tonight is the construction and the content the Bible lets us know very quickly that according to Hebrews chapter 9, Paul was speaking. When you read from verse 1 and 4, 1 to 4, Paul gives us um, a picture. He gives us a very graphic representation of all that was represented in the ark. And I want us to look at it very briefly. Ready? Hebrews chapter 9. That's all right. I'll turn back and read. Then verily he said, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. We're reading to verse 4. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick, the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. After and after the second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all. Read with me verse 4 please if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Which had the golden censer, uh -huh, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and the Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables. So we know that there were three things from Exodus and from Hebrews that the ark it was so designed to be a a, um, it was like a chest, a triangle, a, a, a rectangular chest. Are we together? That was overlaid when you read from chapter 25 from verse 10 to 22 of Exodus. It gives you all the details of the construction of the ark. But then it says it was designed in a way and a manner that it was overlaid with what we call the messy seat. And the Lord made a very interesting statement. He says, Above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you and I will relate with you intimately. There was a location. If you can prepare that ark, he says, I will meet with you. Very important. So we know that the construction of the ark and the content of the ark all together where number one listen pay attention the contents of the ark now we're dealing with it one it had the wood the construction of the wood and do you know 
when you read Exodus chapter 25, beginning from verse 10, God kept telling man, even though my presence will come, you do it. You do this one. You do this one. So the very construction of the Ark of Covenant required the participation of man. This is the first thing we have to understand about the construction and the content. It was not God. God gave the commands. But man was instructed. He was given the dimensions. He was told what to do. But he had to do it. That means if you want to experience the glory of God, there is a role that you have to play. It is not all up to God and it is not all up to you. There is a participatory role that man will always play as far as hosting the grace, the power, the wisdom, the presence of God is concerned. The wood was constructed by man. It took the meticulousness, the discipline, the diligence of going to look for the exact wood and the specification. God came to rest upon it, but it was man who designed it. This is the first information I want you to understand. So the construction, the wooden construction represents the participation of man. Then, number two, the Bible talks about the covenants or the commandments. The table, remember, the, the ten commandments that Moses received from the Lord. And then in anger, he threw it and then he was made to construct the stones again. And God again wrote on those tablets. And he says, take those two tablets, the commandments. Number three, we see the pot or the omer that was full of manna that fell from heaven. In Exodus chapter 16, Exodus chapter 16, when you read from verse 31 to 35, Exodus chapter 16, 31 to 35, they murmured against God and against Moses how that they were hungry and God sent manna, manna from heaven that the Bible tells us was the bread of angels. And every day they were asked to pick and then on the Sabbath they were asked to pick and by the next day it did not decay and he was given an instruction. He says take some of this and put in the pot. Let it be as a testament, as a memorial of that supply and that provision and that power of God. Are we learning? Number three, we see the rod of Aaron that bordered. When you read number 17, the whole text is in number 17 from verse 1 to 10, but particularly verse 9 and 10. Numbers chapter 17. This was a leadership problem, by the way. Man of God, if you are having a very serious leadership problem in your church or in your organization, read Numbers 17 because. God himself brought an end to every kind of controversy around leadership. He said, take the rods of everybody from every tribe, the 12 tribes. He said, place it before the tabernacle, the ark. He says, whichever will board, also take the one of Aaron. So that they will know that my ordination to his priesthood was not human. And the Bible says, by the next day. So they, they will not blame Moses again. There are times you make decisions as a leader and people think it's favoritism. People think you are just being sentimental. There are times you need to trust God to do something that everybody will know. This one is the hand of God. And an end came to all the quarreling and the arguments, the Bible says. So, God instructed immediately. He said, the rod of Aaron that bought it, put it also at the ark. Let it be a memorial. So we see that the Ark of Covenant basically contained three things inside. The table of testaments or commandments. Number two, the rod of Aaron that bordered. Are we together? And then number three, the pot that was full of manna. And then overlaying the Ark was what we call the mercy seat. Why am I taking out time to break these elements of the ark? Because if it is the glory of God you want to see rest, if you want to become a mobile ark, every one of these things that was in the ark must be in you too. 
If you want to replicate the ark in your life, then you have to follow the pattern of the construction also. If anything is found wanting, as far as the elements are concerned, you may not be able to replicate the ark that hosts the presence of God. Are we blessed? So let's look at the significance of these elements and then we pray. Number one, the first lesson we have to learn from the ark is that it was constructed by man. The vessel that carried the ark was a representation of man. Here's what the Bible says. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. It says, The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And then the next verse says, But in a great house, he lists four kinds of vessels and their implication. He says there are vessels of wood, there are vessels of clay, there are vessels of silver, there are vessels of gold. He says some vessels are unto dishonor and there are vessels that are unto dishonor. If you want to become that vessel, here is the condition. If a man will purge himself. He says that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat or fit for the master's use. So the first thing we have to deal with is man's participation. The discipline and the diligence of allowing your life to become that worthy habitation that can host the fullness of the presence and the power of God. If you're with me, say Amen. The ark was made of choice wood, expensive, valuable material. It was not just made of careless wood. It was, it was meticulously built by the intelligence and the artistry of man. Number two, for the sake of time. What is the significance of the covenants? The commandments. They represent laws and they represent instructions. Can I tell you this? If you want to host the presence of God... Within your life must be an accommodation for the principles of the kingdom and instructions. The commandments represent instructions. And these instructions, notice that principally these instructions come from and through men. They come from God. But they come through men. When God delivered the Ten Commandments, He was the one who wrote it. But the person who interpreted and explained it was Moses the man. Any man who is not given to the reception of divine instructions can never truly host the glory of God. Are we learning something now? We are constructing the ark in our own lives now. That the first element that is needed is you. The vessel must be sufficient. Not in yourself necessarily. But that purging by the blood, by the word. To become a vessel of honor. And then instructions. We thrive and we excel and we command victory in this kingdom. On the strength of the laws and the instructions that we receive this is why jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says and i will give you shepherds pastors after my heart it says that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding proverbs continue to ch to challenge us and said that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom it says but fools despise instruction are we together you want to host superior dimensions of the glory of God, especially in this end time. If you want the ark to be experientially constructed in and through your life, then you must be prepared to work with, in keeping with the laws. I'm not just talking of Old or New Testament. I'm talking of laws, the ordinances of the kingdom. And then the instructions of the Lord. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. And if you do obey that instruction, it says you will find rest for your soul. Are we learning? The next element that must be captured in our life 
is the mystery of the rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron validated the priesthood ministry of Aaron. So the rod there is a representation of priesthood. You want your life to be an expression of the ark, you must embrace the mystery of priesthood. And the primary assignment of priesthood is to burn that instance, the ministry of prayer. Your life will never truly be able to be a, a representation of the glory and the grace of God if priesthood is absent in your life. Jesus came into the temple when he found people selling and buying and selling in the temple. The zeal of the Lord ate him up and the Bible says he took whip when he beat them up. This is what he said, my house. If it is truly my house, it shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have turned it into a den of robbers. Many of you have heard me teach. Your house is either one of two things at any given time. A house of prayer or a den of robbers. A den of robbers means a place where thieves dwell. And Satan is the principal thief that can come. So if your life is not a house of prayer as that temple, the next thing it becomes is a den of robbers. Where the thief can come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's no being neutral. At any given time, this temple, your house, is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers. The robbers will come as mysterious demonic afflictions. The robbers will come as all kinds of oppressions. But when it becomes a house of prayer, the fire that is upon that altar will not allow any spirit that is not of the Christ to dwell there. Because the Bible says, Jesus himself teaching said, when a spirit is casted out of a man, Jesus is teaching us now, he says when that spirit comes out of a man, it goes around through desert regions, looking for a place, not finding any place, it will say, I will return back. There is something about the desert that makes the spirit not comfortable nobody is casting the spirit from the desert it will cast itself back and prefer staying in you do you know why because the desert is extremely hot so when your life simulates the condition of the desert that spirit will also not be able to stay within you was it not the fire from the fire that made the viper come out when there is no fire the viper can remain there priesthood hear me believers we must get to a point where genuine prayer becomes a lifestyle not something we do just to obtain things the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than receiving requests the bible says and as he prayed speaking about jesus he says his garment his face became as white and his garment became as white and his countenance changed so prayer is principally a tool for transformation you evolve into superior versions of yourself when you pray you do not find your former self again after prayer the self that you now see is the powerful one is the great one is the anointed one bring a weak believer with no bearing in his life. Bring someone who does not know his left and his right. Submit him to the ministry of priesthood. And watch an evolution happen. A timid person will become a champion in the spirit. If you want to host the glory of God. Especially in these end times. Let me tell you sincerely. Do not ignore the rod of Aaron. It's not just a rod. It's a rod of priesthood. You're not just going to stand and tell demons, go away. You will not just stand over cities and say, I open the tulip gate. No, sir. It will be at the instance of genuine priesthood. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. You have an assignment to register your name in the realm of the spirit. So that demons will not just say, Jesus, I know. 
Paul I know add your name Joshua Selman I know because they are witnesses to your priesthood we are discussing the ark remember the wood of Achaia the Cassia wood remember the commandments laws and instruction remember the rod of Aaron priesthood now the next is the pot or the omer that carried manna Pilaski da branda katoshke de bria shadima katabra sige de beleke de brasi the manna there talks about the ministry of the word Jesus himself was speaking about this in Matthew 4 he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word every word the manna that does not decay the manna that could not go through corruption and the only seed we know that is incorruptible is that which is by the word of God listen to me the word of God defines the jurisdiction of his commitment to the believer God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the scope that the word of God allows him he has chosen to exalt his word even above his name this is the difference between the faith life and superstition God is bound only by his word that means if you want to get God committed to your life it must be the the legal basis upon which you will place your demands must be scripture when Satan came to him he didn't say I think he didn't say I wish he said it is written what gives us victory in this kingdom is what is written not what we want whatever you want you must find out whether it is written or not if what you want is not written it cannot happen what you want only happens when it is written please listen to me if you want to host the glory of god upon your life your church your business it must be a ministry that has respect and value for scripture it was written so that it cannot be changed. It is written. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus himself was teaching. And he said, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we sustain. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. We rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know there are mysteries that control speed there are mysteries that control restoration there are mysteries that control lifting there are mysteries that control being anointed there are mysteries that control exemption there are mysteries that control prosperity there are mysteries that control influence your assignment is to walk in partnership with the spirit of grace and find for everyone that seek it find it the seed for finding is to seek if you do not seek you cannot have the harvest of finding proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says through desire a man having separated himself that he seeketh and he intermeddleth with all wisdom. Please let us obtain grace from God to go back to scripture and settle down. Otherwise our life will look superstitious yet will keep failing. I believe the word of God. Why do I know the sick will be healed? Because it is written. Why do I know God will commit himself to your lifting tonight? Because it is written. Not because I am a man of God. Being a man of God is a secondary reason. The primary reason why all things happen is because it is written. John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him, without him means outside of his influence, was not anything made that was made. That means when you neglect the word of God, the possibility of creation and manifestation has left you. It has to be at the instance of the word.
Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophet had in these last days spoken to us through his son, which is the word, whom he had appointed to be heir over all things. And then when you read verse 3, he says, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person and upholding how many things upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow upholding my tomorrow through the word of his power up upholding my future my confidence is beyond the advantage or the disadvantage in a territory your confidence must be based on it is written it is written. Why will you succeed? I have a great father. You are joking. Woe unto him that puts his strength in a man. Even the word himself used it is written to defend himself. The word of God didn't say my opinion. The word submitted to it is written. Can I tell you this? You must know how to defend your victory. It is written. Why should I leave this family? It is not we are members of a particular church. That is wonderful. There is a place for prophetic covering. But I tell you the real reason why we excel in this kingdom is because it is written. Remember the manner it was kept here as a memorial that there is no victory for you if it is not written. Anything that is not written cannot happen. The anointing of the Spirit does not work at random. The anointing of the Spirit follows what is written. So if you are making claims in prayer, there is a verification system in the realm of the Spirit before the anointing begins to move on that wise. The anointing does not just come because you want it to come. The anointing verifies whether that desire is consistent with what is written. Preachers, let's stop preaching what we want and preach what is. Because what we want will not come to pass until it is written. Please sit down. The Lord is turning you into an ark. Now you know what makes the ark more than the object. The participatory role that you have to play. Sitting down and waiting for God to do everything is a joke. It took man to build the ark. It will take you to make that place conducive for him. You want to become an ark, you must submit yourself to laws and instructions. And then you must submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood. You must learn to pray until you evolve into a vessel of honor. You can pray yourself from wood and become clay. Pray yourself from clay and become silver. Pray yourself from silver until you become gold. Hear me? When we pray, we truly evolve. Yes, sir. The version of you, your future is looking for has not yet become. So your future is looking for a version of you that you have not become. Ah. The dream you saw about your greatness, that dream was designed to happen to another version of you, not this version. And your destiny keeps waiting. So it looks like you are not moving forward. And God is saying, no, I want to bless you. But there is a version of you that must carry that anointing. The anointing you are looking for for nations cannot come on this version. I'm seeing the spirit of prayer just coming on 11 people. This is what I'm seeing. Please just help them. Eleven people. Shalis Kadebregadekata. 
Now you understand that prayer is for your growth, for your evolution. Hear me, hear me. You can pray an old realm out of your life into a new season. You can use prayer to close seasons and open new ones. Can I be honest with you? If we truly want to become this ark, we must obtain grace from God to move past just the realm of meeting needs to the realm where you stand with God and you can grow to a point of stature where God can trust you with the grace for nations, not just things. We're not talking about having one or two things that God can carry the destiny of a territory and say, take. If they are saved, it's your fault. If they are not saved, it's your fault. Look at the rewards of those who were faithful with the talents that were given to them. Authority over nations. Believers, let's return to the genuine ministry of priesthood. More than just give me things. I'm not saying those things are wrong. You can listen to my message, teach us to pray. I taught there about the mysteries, the dimensions of prayer. There is a dimension of prayer that is for supplication and petitions. But primarily, prayer is a tool for fellowship. And in that fellowship, there is evolution. You know you have met him because you changed. The protocol of encounter is that when you meet him, you are changed. And we all, with unveiled face, it says, beholding the glory... It's not the glory that changes. It's you that changes. Hear me? When the animals looked at what Jacob put, they were the ones who were changed into what they were seeing. And then, the manna, which is the word of God. Ignorance is dangerous in this end time. You must know what is written. Please sit down. The Bible basically contains three things. Am I wasting your time? Every time you open up scripture, the Bible contains three things that you must never forget. Number one, the Bible contains promises. The promises of God represent the scope of His commitment to you. There are promises that He has made. Excellent things He has spoken about His Zion. You must know the promises of God as revealed from scripture what has God said he would do because when you can find what God said he will do I assure you he will do it Genesis 21 and verse 1 please give it to us verse 1 and 2 Genesis 21 read with me please 1 to read as he has uh huh and the Lord did unto Sarah when he speaks he does except he has not said it so you must find his promises Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in her old age at the set time which the Lord had spoken promises that's the first thing we search for in scripture every time you open your Bible your eyes must look for promises. Lord, what have you said concerning my life? What have you said concerning my destiny? It is only what he has said that comes to pass. Integrity is the ability to say and do. If God has not said, why should he do? So when you find what he has said, then because he's a God of integrity, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. 
nor the son of man that he should repent. You can trust what he said. Now listen carefully. The second thing that is contained in scripture are principles. Principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom. How the kingdom operates. When you study scripture, you find therein principles. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. He says to stand and to ask. Look at that path, that old path. Stand in the way and ask for the old path. It says wherein is the good way. And when you have found it, walk in it. Jesus the word also called himself the way. There is a revelation of Jesus called Jesus the way. How things are done in the kingdom. There is a way God lifts people. There is a way God restores. There is a way God anoints. There is a way God increases. There is a way God de defends people. You have to understand the ways of God. Before he showed Moses his glory, the first thing he showed Moses were his ways. So, promises, principles. The third thing we find in scripture are prophecies. Revelations about the future. To be able to give you hope and to give you comfort. We find in scripture prophecies. So that we know that we are overcomers because of the prophecies that we have seen. Every time you open your Bible, you are searching for these three things. Promises, principles, prophecies. If your life is built upon the integrity of it is written, the dust will come and go. Every other thing will come and go. But because this house is built on a rock, it will stand and it will remain. The same thing that happened to the house on the sand happened to the house on the rock. It was not the superstructure. It was the foundation. Jesus said, this is how I will build my church. I will build my church with a formula. And if this formula is, is honored, the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Build your life on scripture. Build your life on it is written. And you have nothing to fear. The uncertainties that plague our world. The uncertainties that plague ministries. Plague regions. Are enough to make us fear. But the word of God can give us confidence. Because we know that it is written. Prophecy already told us the end of it. We know who has won. Ah. There are times that you are watching a movie and someone who has watched it before is sitting with you. He cannot have your anxiety. They kill the actor and you are, frust you are frustrated. I've wasted one hour. I thought this man would win and the person says, you just keep watching. And you are wondering, what, where is your confidence coming from? The confidence is coming from the fact that he's watched it before. He watched it right to the point that he saw the end. And I can tell you, this right here already told me the end of my life. Yeah. He will not suffer my food to be. I carry your presence. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. I have found the end of my destiny here. That I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say at the Lord, that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring you a future and there is a difference between having a future and having an end. You can have a future. But maybe not have an end. Your today was a future to last week. Future is relative. End is fixed. I am secured in both. I have a future and I have an end.
the final element and then we begin to pray is the mercy seat that overlays it there is something called the mercy seat exodus chapter 25 when you read 17 to 22 just write it for reference the mercy seat truly means the mercy of god it's as simple as clear as honest as that what is the mercy of god the mercy of god is a factor that is is an invention from his intelligence to be able to deal with man in spite of the vacillations of man the mercy of god was an invention that was custom made for man god builds the idea of mercy so that in spite of the frailties of man there is still a guarantee that he can end this is the reason why mercy is not an attribute of god that angels and other beings experience that's why satan cannot be forgiven because mercy is not within his jurisdiction and to tell you how determined god is for us to be partakers of his mercy he tied his mercy with time so that every 24 hours as time resets his mercy also resets it's in your bible he says his mercies are new every morning hallelujah the mercy of god is not a license for licentiousness but it's an advantage the mercy of god gives me guarantee that in spite of my frailties i will still be able to birth the purposes of god the mercy of god is a covenant that we had with david as a result of the desire of david to build him a house he came and he entered the covenant of mercy with david he says no matter what you do david i have covenanted with you saul did not have his mercy that's why he lost his throne saul was more well behaved than david oh yes read your bible saul was by far more well behaved than david but the mercies of david you are good and your mercy is forever you are good and your mercy is forever now watch this all healing all deliverances all restorations stem from that department of his mercy it is on the strength of god's mercy that we can guarantee that someone who has been oppressed that a family that legally gave themselves to the devil as lawful captives when it has to do with victory over captivity is not power you need is the mercy of god There are spirits you don't just bind and cast. There are rules of engagement. There is a kind of captivity called lawful captivity. It is this kind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. For instance, the legal access that Satan had over us by reason of the fall of Adam could not be casted away. No. God did not use power to save man. It was the blood and his death. His power was demonstrated in that mercy. Are we together now? So tonight, I have two assignments in this place. I have just completed one. To challenge you that you can become a mobile Gather the elements that they gathered. Obey what they obeyed. That glory will rest upon you the same way it rested upon them. An individual can be a carrier of that presence. You can take that presence everywhere. 
Anybody who drags you who is a Philistine will soon know what he carried. You don't have to tell people I am dangerous. Let the devil try you. And what happened to the Philistines? When they took the ark, they stole it. The ark that was not talking was bringing havoc in the camp of the enemy. But when the same ark was taken to the house of Obed Edom, in 90 days, 90 days, that means if you are employed in three months of your being in that office, there are things that should begin to happen as a testament that the ark has arrived. Like I was teaching you yesterday, please, this is not some Pentecostal motivation. Believe me, it is true. You can be a living, breathing carrier of this ark. That way, when people are tired of trouble, they invite you to their house. Who do we invite to just sit down for five minutes? And you just sit down in their house, and they say, just to say, God bless you. And you stand up and they start rejoicing. Because right there, the five minutes visitation, it was not just a man that came. The man is the wood, the earthen vessel, but there is the excellency of what has come upon it. When you stretch your hands to heal the sick, it is not the mortal hands of a man. No, no, no. Just help those under the anointing. When you stretch your hands to deliver, the demons are not seeing hands. You are the one who is seeing a hand. The demons are seeing the same act. That same act. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it rain, let it rain in us. Let the weight of your glory flow. Listen, listen. One day, I was in the place of prayer and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I began to hear the song of angels and this was the song that I heard let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth. 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 Hear me, you're here in this place tonight. Before I begin to pray for the sick, I know that our time is gone. In the construction of the ark, there are elements. The first of them that I taught you is the wood. The wood had to avail itself to be used to create that habitation. There are people here scattered across the overflow. All of the overflows following online, flowing from whatever nation. Before we even begin to minister to people, I just sense in my heart to make the altar call very quickly. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I desire to be this living ark of God's presence. Perhaps you were not here yesterday. Or you were here yesterday but you had not made up your mind to make this decision. 
our time is far spent here's how we're going to do it every overflow when i make the call you just go to the front of your screen and you stand there for time's sake i'm going to count one to five there are people here who are saying apostle i want to avail myself for the sake of your glory the glory of the only begotten even full of grace and truth you want me to pray for you before we start i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain i'm going to count five run and come and stand one run to jesus make sure you understand what you are doing you're coming out to give your life to jesus christ two all the overflows please come out I hear the chains falling. Hey, I hear the chains falling. Keep coming. Let it end tonight. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. My God, I already sense such, such power in this place. I'm going to pray for you, all of you who are in front. Many of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. The Bible says, let it be known to you the message of Peter, that this same Jesus has been exalted today as both Lord and Christ. This is the one we preach, Christ crucified, Christ resurrected. Many of you are coming here tonight. God is giving you a new beginning. Do not be ashamed. We are a family. Those following online, you who is following from your home, you are following everywhere across the globe, God is giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. Please lift your right hand. Say after me as loud as you can. All of you in front, all the overflow, same, and those following in your home. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe in you. That you are the son of God. You obtain your mercy. And I obtain your grace. I ask. That you forgive me. And in the name of Jesus. I declare. That I am a recipient. Of eternal life. Jesus Christ. Is my savior. My lord. And my king. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Thank you, Father, for these ones that you have brought to yourself. I pray in the name of Jesus. By the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that He gives you a new experience from today. I commend you to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Spirit. I pray that you be established and grounded in righteousness. And that you become mighty vessels for the master's use. In Jesus name I pray. Now very quickly, just make sure you obtain a card. There will be counselors giving you a card. Once you obtain it, you can return back to your seat and just be patient. And follow the remaining part of the meeting. Hallelujah. Please everybody rise. We have a few minutes. I want to pray for you tonight. It's a miracle service. And it's going to be a very quick one because our time is gone. Please let them return back to their seat. Just be patient with them. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time. Let hope. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in the holy light. One more time. Let it Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hallelujah. 
the Lord by what he is going to be doing within the few minutes that we have. Miracles and signs and wonders are a message from God to his people. Two messages basically. Number one, every time you see a miracle, it's a revelation of the love of God to his people. He's telling you that I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Number two, miracles are an attestation as to the fact that he is still Lord. I shared with you that there are four things that a man must have dominion over to be called Lord. Number one is the earth. Number two, the fullness, the resources. Number three, the mind control systems. And number four, the inhabitants. And the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the walls, and they that dwell therein. We are going to be praying for the sick. I will be ministering to you. We will do that very fast within the time that we have. Please let your heart be open. You didn't come to waste your time. And those in the overflows, I like you to open up your heart, knowing that the power of God will touch you where you are. And the Lord himself will bring you victory. Are you ready for tonight? Lord, give me a visitation. Please pray in one minute. Give me a visitation that will change my life. Give me a visitation that will change my life. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me start by praying for people who have been oppressed. There are people here who have been oppressed of the devil. When Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius, you don't have to come out, don't worry. I will just give you the instructions on what to do. The Bible says, Peter was preaching and he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, with the Holy Ghost, he said, and with power. And the Bible says, he went about healing, not all they who were sick. You call it sickness, he called it oppression. And it tells you the oppressor, the devil, for God was with him. There is nowhere I find the devil that I will leave him to go free. For oppressing lives and oppressing destinies. I want to pray for you now. And please as much as possible, ushers now, please listen. Whether you are an usher or not, I want you to do well to just cooperate. Some of you are members. The ushers may be limited. But I want you to please help them. Anyone who is under the anointing close to you, please do well and be your brother's keeper so that we minimize people enjoying themselves are we together the Lord Jesus appeared to me many years ago and he gave me an instruction and he told me that every city he would send me to and every nation and every territory the lights that came from him to me that there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will come upon and I believe tonight please help them I believe that this light it brings healing it brings miracles I want to pray for you now there are people who have been oppressed of the devil please I want you to bring them out now these people I'm about to pray for at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus every oppression that is not of God every demonic orchestration of darkness that has sat on the destinies of people in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God as you shout it is the healer the shout that brings down Jericho I decree and declare at the mention of that name the one exalted as Lord and Christ let there be deliverance for you right now are you ready please bring them out one two three shout Jesus I command every devil now, let their destinies go. Bring them out. Every devil, I command liberty, freedom, by the power that is in the name of Jesus. 
Wherefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I decree and declare, be delivered now. Orchestrations of ancestry, activities of witchcraft connected to bloodline. Tonight we come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. I cause every devil. We are still praying. Hey, na paradusi atadada. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Now, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing families. There are whole families that have been under bondage. I want to pray now. There's fire coming from Kapaka to Katea. Bring them out in the name of Jesus. Every family here, under the sound of my voice, that has been under any demonic siege, at the count of three, let there be liberty. One, two, three, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Help them, please. Let an end come in the name of Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Hallelujah. We are praying. Who is Ebenezer? Our time is up. I have to pray for the sick. But I'm hearing a name Ebenezer. Who is Ebenezer? Ebenezer, you are wearing like a blue, like a check shirt. Is that Ebenezer? Is there someone like that? What's, please verify. Ebenezer. Don't match the people. Ebenezer. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from this side. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? I mean your state. Ekiti state. Ekiti state. Yes. I want to pray for you. That everything that is connected to witchcraft, I stretch my hands, be delivered now. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I bring you life. That lady, this one, you on red, lifting your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oppression goes forever over your life. Sir, is this your wife? I'm seeing the Lord take something out of her body. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something leaving her body that the devil has planted to destroy her. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I command that devil, I call you by name. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, Whosoever the Son sets free, is free indeed therefore we curse every devil madam i'm here to pray for the sick but i stretch my hands right now let there be a miracle for you in the presence of your husband don't worry she doesn't have to come to the front in the name of jesus be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now, be healed now. is it amarachi is there something like that Amarachi, who is that? Amarachi, I'm hearing a name. Amarachi. The woman I'm seeing is not very tall. You bob your hair. You bob your hair. Amarachi, is there someone like that? What is your name? Oh. Your lifting has come. Oh, oh, oh. Look at 
help me, my dear. Where are you coming from? Ababa. Ababa. Where is that? What state is that? Okay, here. I want to pray for you and your family. Huh? You are the father. Baba, come. The Lord is visiting this family. You see why it's good to invite people to church? Because God can just save a whole nation. This is not about a man of God being powerful. I'm seeing one more person. You are three. Who is that? I'm seeing one more person connected to this family. In the name of Jesus. Huh? I read Christopher. Where? I read Christopher. I invited him. It's from where I don't know where he is. Because I'm seeing three people, not two. Where is the third person? What's the name? If, if it's not here because of time, we just have to pray so that we'll redeem the time. Sir, can I pray for you? You love Jesus? Very much. This is, you see, the beauty of coming to church. I was glad when they said unto me. God. The house of God is not a nuisance to civilization. We are a blessing. I pray for you right now. You and your daughter and all who are connected to you, sir. I pray for you. Four years, you are yet to have a child. This is what I'm saying. Four years. Who is that person? Please make sure you are married. Four years. Husband and wife, you are both in the choir. Husband and wife, place your hand. God is going to give you a baby boy. Help her. Out now. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ. Celebrate your miracle. The hand of God. Marvelous hand of God. You too? How many years? Four years. Is your husband here? No, he's not here, sir. Four years, you are trusting God. You believe in miracles? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What's your name? Pinedu. Who is the head of this choir? Are you the head of the choir? Like the, like the coordinator? This because this is what I'm seeing on her. Because the Lord is speaking to me and saying he's taking away the shame of the coordinator. And I'm saying, because she's not dressed like, I'm not seeing her dress in the same uniform like them. My dear, in the name of Jesus, we come by the God of heaven and we declare, let your womb be open now. Let it be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is out too. For the same reason, I'll pray for you. Please don't come out at random. If you make this, let's, let's just, don't worry. God is going to visit you. Are we together now? God is going to visit you. The power of God is coming on someone at the ministers, just one person. I just saw light. The Lord is shifting you into a new season. That's what the Lord is telling me. He's shifting you into a new season. I pray for you, all of you who are here for the sake of time, we have to rush. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a businessman here that God wants to restore. You have lost a lot of money this year. I have to pray for you. I don't mean somebody who is starting. Don't worry. I know most, this is a business place. We are talking about the East here. So I'm sure everybody will come out if I've said, but just settle down there. There is a specific person that the Lord is revealing to me. I don't know what you do. Is it, is it something that has to do with construction? I'm seeing that you've lost a lot of money. If there is someone like that, I want to pray for you while I quickly pray for them. Father, everyone who is in the name of Jesus, like Eli. Madam, this woman lifting her hands. 
I'm seeing oil coming on your head. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is revealing this to me. Right now I stretch my hands and I declare. In the name of Jesus, let everything that represents oppression in your life and your family, let it come to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come to an end right now. There is someone holding photos. You came here with photos, pictures of your family members. Please, if there's someone like that, please verify so that it doesn't look like well. If, if it's not, I'm not saying if you have photos in your bag, you are holding photos. Let me pray for you. It's just the instruction that the Lord is giving to me. For everyone here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I declare a miracle for you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. And sir, I pray for you and your daughter and this. Hold on. Is he your son or your brother? My brother. Same father, same mother. Younger brother? Younger brother. Who is Christopher? Christopher. What's your name? Christopher. Arid. From where? I'm from Amechala. Amechala. I'm going to pray for you. Because, uh, please don't feel I'm not a prophet of doom. God will save you. But I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing him inside a coffin. I'm not, that's why I said, don't be afraid. This is where ministers of life. I'm just revealing to you. You see the power of scripture. Because it is written is greater than I saw. No matter what it is that you see, dominion is the ability to submit what you saw to it is written. This is how ministers of the gospel, the administration of the prophetic must be done with respect to the authority of scripture. That means regardless what you see, if it's inconsistent with what is written, that becomes your assignment. To make what you saw or what you heard, turn and become what is written. That's what it means to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is how prophecy edifies the body. When prophecy submits to it is written, it now begins to edify. Otherwise, it will plant fear. If I leave this man right now, I have not blessed him. I will not only plant fear, I will plant fear to his family members who are watching. But dominion is the ability to bring any other thing, including what you saw, to the obedience of Christ. I'm saying this because the Lord is also helping to train people in administering the gifts of the Spirit. So that we don't end up planting fear and a conference like this is done and people are worse than they were before it started. No. The character of the operation of Scripture is that it must take away fear. Because God is love and perfect love casts out fear. In the name of Jesus, sir. No, I'm, I'm, don't worry. I lay my hands upon you. As a point of contact, who is this one? Your wife? Who is this lady? Okay. Don't worry, sir. Wherever they are, as you are standing here, by faith, we agree for this family. Let there be transformation right now. And sir, in the name of Jesus, I declare that anything that is inconsistent with the character of the Christ in your life, we declare that it comes to an end now. For all of you who have photos, I lay my hands on those photos prophetically. And in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, let there be miracles for you. Let there be miracles for you. In Jesus' name. Please return to your seat. I want to pray for the sick now very quickly. Please return to your seat so that we'll have space. Just believe that it is done. I believe in miracles. I'm a miracle myself. We make Miracle walk, promise tree, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We call you away, make miracle walk, promise tree, light in the darkness. My God, that is. Wow. I want to pray for the sick, but the Lord is giving me an instruction. I'll pray for the sick. Please, I want to be your brother's keeper over this prayer I want to pray. And I will tell you why. Every meeting I go to, God gives me this instruction. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to just help the people. There is a grace for speed. 
that can come upon an individual, that can come upon ministries. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Jezreel. Truly, God can compress time. Dominion over time is real dominion. Speed is a system of advantage given by God to man to help us actualize destiny. I want to pray. The reason why I'm saying you should help people is because people will start running. I want you to just hold them, bring them out here quickly. We are going to do this very fast. I apologize for the time, sir, sincerely. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Father, in the name of oh, my goodness, my God. Look, I'm just seeing fire rest on people. Right now, I declare, at the count of three, may this grace for thee. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. Help them, please. I decree and declare, every delay over anyone's life, I come by the road of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, receive speed. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Inside, outside, the overflow. Take that grace. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed in your accomplishments. I take 10 years and I put it in one year. I take one year and I put it in one year. 10 years in one year. One year in one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over families here. Receive speed in Jesus name. 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 I am seeing fire fall on the choir. This is what I'm just seeing. Take that fire right now. Help them, please. Take that fire. Take that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed is coming upon your life. Speed is coming upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone held by any chain of delay in the name that is above all names, I'm praying again. For individuals and for families, I break that shake of Bakatu Kata, Krataka Tabakatos, Kapatas Kotopokos Katabata, Krates Ketepekete, and break it as Ketepakatos. Let that chain of delay be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Hear me? When the glory of God came upon Aaron's rod, in one night, without a root, it bordered. One night, without a root. Everything that has refused to walk in your life, we stand under the corporate anointing here. And in the name of Jesus, is the master we have called all night. Nevertheless, I speak to you, go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Go back and expel. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing right now. I want you to believe in the healing power of Jesus for all of you who have come out here I declare that this grace you have contacted let it begin to speak immediately 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 who is Jennifer 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 I'm hearing a name Jennifer In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is rolling reproach from your family. He's rolling away reproach right now. Rolling away reproach right now. In the name of Jesus, 
he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah even the root of david is worthy hallelujah let this be the beginning of seasons of speedy achievement please lay your hands wherever you are trusting god for a miracle i want to pray for the sick now sir this is our father I, I presume you look like an indian family am i right on that i want to pray for you the lord wants to take away sickness i'm looking at a thermometer go up and down this has to do with high blood pressure i want to pray for you you believe in miracles sir can i pray for you you can just stay there no problem you don't have to come out i'll pray for you i just just to let you know that god is bringing a visitation god is bringing a visitation please lay your hands where you are trusting god for healing you can stand in for someone to those of you who are in front here please go back to your seat rejoicing anyone please go back to your seat rejoicing anyone here who if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest please do that all the overflows just lay your hands where you are trusting god for a miracle right now i believe in miracles i truly do i believe in the manifestation of god's power help her please some of you are already healed right from when you were coming overflows lay your hands everywhere i want to pray for you now listen for the sake of time i do not want and i do not intend to stretch us beyond time but very quickly for the sake of time this is what i want us to do as soon as i pray for you some of you checking yourself from the time you came out here there are all kinds of miracles that have happened but very quickly as soon as i pray for you the power of god is going to touch you you will be healed i want the moment you confirm your miracle i want you to quickly run and stand here please if we can have one or two pastors here to just help us on that we'll do it very fast take a few of the testimonies we'll do the final impartation and we're done for the night hallelujah praise the lord after a loud shout the healing power of jesus will begin to move not your shout there is someone under the power of the holy spirit right now who will shout loud to the hearing of everybody honestly sometimes i don't know why god does that now i'm ready to pray for you in the name of jesus lay your hands agree with me in prayer in the name of jesus christ in the kapakatos katepata in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i take authority over every devil of darkness the spirit behind disease sickness and infirmity i declare let god's people go free now everywhere following wherever you are i declare unto you be healed right now be healed right now every bone condition be healed right now if you're here and you're on a wheelchair or you're using crutches or on a stretcher lift it up and stand up now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ every blind eyes i command be open now every blind eyes be open now every deaf ear be open now every blood infection every blood in apakaposkata i'm seeing god healing people of hepatitis b be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing someone with a condition um let it not embarrass you 
You go to toilets, but you cannot use the toilet. This is not just pile. This is a situation, I don't know what medical condition that is, but it's difficult for you. You, you can't even use the toilet. Right now, the power of God is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with severe pain around your back. In fact, many people, not just one person, the power of God is touching you right now. Someone's left eye. You didn't used to see well with your left eye. But I pray for you right now. Clarity of vision right now. There's someone, even though I pray for people with bone condition, but you can't even lift your hands freely like this. I don't know what the problem is. I rebuke that devil. Peptic ulcer, be healed now. Just help those under the anointing. My grace, be healed now. Every stomach ulcers and all kinds of ulcers, be healed right now. Help her, help her, help her. Be healed right now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? Anyone with any growth in any part of your body, whether growth around your breast area, your abdominal area, every growth in your body, I command that growth to disappear now. There's someone here, I don't know what was diagnosed in your head. Like inside, not, not on your head. Inside, I, I don't know if it's a, whatever medical condition. But in the name of Jesus right now, I declare unto you, be healed now. Be healed now. Lower abdominal pain. Severe pain, help them. Lower abdominal pain, the Lord is healing you right now. My God, there are all kinds of miracles. I'm looking at someone, your uncle, just here. There is a severe pain there. As soon as I, I'm done praying, check yourself now. You will find out that pain is gone. The Lord is showing me someone, you have a problem with your throat. You know how when you swallow something and it doesn't go, you keep feeling like there's something on your throat. Help her please. This is how someone has been feeling. But right now, after this prayer, at the instance of this prayer, that devil lets you go forever. Now, for the sake of time, whether or not I mention your case, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. All the overflows be healed in Jesus' name. Across the nations of the earth be healed in Jesus' name. There are already people coming out. Now please we have five minutes for this. I want you to check yourself while we are rejoicing. Hallelujah. You are going to give us one hot Igbo praise. Let the devil know that Jesus is moving in the east. While that is happening, I like you to come out. Please check yourself. The moment you find out there's a miracle, come out. Miracles are happening here. Are you celebrating miracles? Please check yourself and make your way to the front. Choir, can you help us in one minute, two or three minutes? Just give us a song of praise as we celebrate the magnificent hand of God. Go ahead, please, very quickly. Keep coming, check yourself and make your way to the front. Those in the overflows, if they are coming for testimony, please allow them. Usher's protocol, allow them to come. Very, very quickly. Please check them. Let there be a group of people who will check them and confirm. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Miracles are happening in this place. Everybody, <laughs> 
Jesus here. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated for a few minutes. Yes, please. Very quickly. Are you ready? Very quickly. Your name and what God has done very quickly. Yes, please. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I'm Kolakia Osakuni. Okay. Okay, so... Straight to the point. Yes. What happened to you? If anything you said... That we should lay our hands on the place that's pain, that we need healing. Yes. I laid my hands on my head because I've been having this, I don't know, migraine, headache. It's so... I don't what happened people. now? And immediately, I jumped dead. It jumped dead. I'm going to go ahead and come down. I said, I'm so happy. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to get on instant miracle in my Hallelujah. life. Hallelujah. Like, I even had, like, eyesight. I, I couldn't see. I, I wouldn't see what's written on the... I have glasses, you know? So, I'm trying to be like... I'm you can see clearly now. Are you giving everywhere. Jesus praise? praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Celebrate Jesus very quickly. Praise the Lord. I'm Reverend Prince Alice. For more than 10 years now, I've been having this pain on my left shoulder that I can't even do anything. You're a man of God. God. Yes, sir. But now, lift it I up. Can't Let the it. devil see you lift it up. I can't feel it anymore. I can't feel it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will bless you to never return. And may your ministry step into a new season. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Very quickly. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I'm Orifra Christiana. And I had lower back pain for some months now. But now I feel so good. Completely. Bend down. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain. Completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you again. Yes, please. Go ahead, sir. Praise the Lord. Also, I'm, putting this, I'm the businessman you mentioned who has, been, who has had serious losses. Secondly, I have my left eye. I have received serious healing on my left eye and serious abdominal pain just left. What happened to you now? Free. Gone completely. completely In the name of Jesus, I declare restoration for your business. Whatever the issue is, we come as the parliament of heaven. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare an end comes now. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Sir, when you mention the ankle problem. This That's right. This man knows how to do this thing. God bless you. Yes, go ahead, Pastor. Hallelujah. So you made mention of the ankle. Um, I had an ankle dislocation. I couldn't even train. Ankle dislocation. Right now, For how long? No more. For some weeks right now. I couldn't Check yourself. Train. Jump. Any pain. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you are free right now. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Yes. My name is Pastor John Tumobi. I have this terrible back pain. He has been there for many years, uh, for, for a long time now. Every time I wake up to pray in the morning, I can't, I can't, every time, even when I go for programs, yes. I'll be stretched. But this night is gone and I'm here. In the name of Jesus. Look what God, you are, oh, you are the man who was standing here. Oh, okay. I thought you were the one who was standing here. In the name of Jesus, Pastor, I declare over you and over your ministry. Look at me, sir. You have a church? Can I pray for you? There, you, that's your wife? Don't worry, you don't have to come. If God touches him, he will show that you, both of you are one. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of the Lord come upon you and your ministry. I release grace for the next season. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. The same way God healed you here. I pray for you. I'm seeing fire come on your hands, sir. In the name of Jesus, let it be a new season for you. Madam, as he's touching you, he's touching your husband, and both of you will begin to operate in this grace. God bless you, sir. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Oh, this is our daddy. Sorry, sir. This man had been feeling headache all day because of high blood pressure. As you have high as, blood pressure? Yes. yes as soon as you mentioned the high blood case, he laid his hands on his head. 
and the, the head baba that before. came here yes i did not take medicine because of because i was bringing my daughter here so while i was here my headache was my head was telling me that you did not take medicine today and so it is going to continue. Yes, and right. it is the word of God that will heal it. That's right. So when you said we should place our hands there, immediately I place my hand there. I am free. In the name of Jesus, it will never return, never return to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, please. Very quickly. Young man with the throat problem you mentioned. Throat condition. Yes. How long? What's your name? Um, Toby Wazo. I uh -huh. most of yesterday in the hospital. My throat, I couldn't swallow. Like, I couldn't even eat. But when you were, when you were praying, you mentioned it in your life. I'm can, I can talk now. I was whispering in the morning. But still now I can talk. Praise the Lord. What will you eat this night now? What is... What kind of food will let the devil know that you are well? May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please, the next person, very quickly. No, don't give him the mic. If you give them mic, they will not. Just, just hold it for them, sir. Yes. Sir, I play, I play football frequently, sir. You are a footballer? Yes, I play football frequently, sir. For? I play football frequently. Okay. So, I have this pain on my left knee. A knee pain? Yes, sir. For how long? Since this year, sir, actually. Okay. And right now, when check you yourself. Okay, check yourself. Okay, check. You play for who? You professionally? No, 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 no. Or oh, you just play football? Oh, I thought it's professionally. I would have prayed for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. No. May the Lord bless you. Whatever you are doing professionally, may God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Yes, sir. This woman has had what doctor called clavicular spondylosis. Come she again. couldn't raise her arm for two years. And you couldn't raise your hand. For two raise years. it now. Look at this. Let us speak. What is? I can hardly sleep on this side. Each time I sleep, I wake up with pain. And right now, I can't feel the pain. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. It will never return to you again. Okay. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. He had, he's had pain for, uh, around his uh, private region for over two years. My God. Immediately she, he came in and he started praying. It disappeared. A miracle for you now. Anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent, my dear brother. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, for the sake of time, there's, there's a long queue here. We'll, we'll just take two or three, three, and then we'll just pray tomorrow. During Reverend George session, you can share it. The most important thing is that God visited the people. It doesn't matter how or through who it happened. We give him all the glory. Yes, please. This young lad is saying he's had stomach pain for three days now. But this when boy. we are praying, the stomach pain disappears. You know I love children. What's your name? Kesta, where is it? Where is the Kesta? How old are you? Eight. Eight. May God make you such a smart child. You will never do anything twice to succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. You are healed. You remain healed forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. He said his heart and his eyes has been paining him for over for a long time now. And How long? Head. I don't know. As it has been long, but I had a headache this as I was coming, but it disappeared as we were praying. Completely. Completely. It's gone. May the Lord bless you. This tall gentleman, are you a footballer? Yes, he looks like... Because I was laying my head there, but as soon as she mentioned it, he disappeared. Oh, come, check yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Yes, let's just... He has told me a myriad of things. You are born in to share a testimony. <laughs> um, at time, yes, go ahead. He has told me a myriad of things. Okay. From stomach ulcers to everything. But the one that is striking is that his vision... One of the eyes could not see properly. Completely. But he said, one, saw better than the other. one was seeing better and now, than the other. But right now, completely. He says he has 20 20 vision. You can see everything here. This one saw better than the other, but I, I, I could notice for as long as I can remember. When yes. I'm just all, all alone, I could just close this and I noticed that this one saw better than this. Well, it wasn't really a problem for me, but now I can see 20 In the name of Jesus, perfection for you. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. I'm Kosi, and I've had this pain on my ankle for as long as I can remember. Pain on your ankle? Again? Yeah, this one. Yes. I don't know when it started. I just know I can't And right now, what happened to you? When you said, um, when, at the end of the prayer, 
that everything is going to be fine. But during the prayer, I was still feeling the pain. And I felt, ah, are you sure? And right now, right now, what happened to you? Like, Check yourself. It's gone completely. I, she will never return to you again. This, this gentleman, okay. My name is Humble. The last time you come to Opera Square, I was my, with my medical report. I lay it down here. Since 2008, I was having chest pain. I have go to a different lab, or they will tell me that my ring. What happened now? What happened now? Now I can storm to the completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, it never returns to you. Now, for all of you, whether you have come out to testify or not, we give Jesus the glory for all that has happened, and we declare that these miracles remain permanent in your life in Jesus' name. And for those of you who receive miracles online, you can do well to let the church know. That you have been touched by the power of God. Please rise up. Let's do the final impartation so we can wrap up the meeting for tonight. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Please do not forget the teaching that you heard tonight. In addition to the powerful sessions that you'll be having tomorrow and then on Sunday. Make sure that your heart is open. The conference is not over. There's tomorrow's session in the morning and then on Sunday powerful sessions with the Spirit of God. I want to pray and declare over your life an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It is possible for you to receive a grace you did not come to this meeting with. That is the essence of conferences like this. That you hear the word but then you are empowered by the Spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 verse 2 says and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. The Holy Spirit comes to confirm the word. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice the grace that you will need to demonstrate the reality of the fact that God lives in you. I release that grace upon you now. I release that grace upon you now. Hear me? Everywhere you have been inefficient, I decree and declare the grace that makes for excellence there is such a grace may that grace rest upon you now every closed door that has refused to open over your life and your destiny I join my faith with all the servants of God here and we declare may that door be open now may that door be open now Please hear me. Where you have failed again and again and again, we release grace upon you. Because today you have become the act of God in experience. May your results show that you carry divine presence. Let me pray for your family members who are not here. You see, in this kingdom, the law is as for me and my house. If you are blessed alone, you are not blessed. It has to extend to you. It says, for this promise is unto you and to your children. To your children's children, as many as are afar off, even those that the Lord will call. I pray for you. If there is anyone connected to you who is going through any season that requires the administration of God's power, in the name of Jesus, we bring those negative seasons to an end now. Some of you have lost time. Some of you have lost things. I decree and declare, let there be supernatural restoration. If there is anyone here that is trusting God for a job, or trusting God for some sort of establishment, structural establishment, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be established now. I want to declare advancement over your life. The Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. It is God that causes men to advance. Men do not just move. I pray for you. Where you have, you have encompassed this mountain long enough, therefore I prophesy, 
go higher. I prophesy, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Please hear me. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Like it happened to the Philistines. Anybody who troubles you goes down instantly. Please believe it. We are wrapping up. Can I pray for you? If there is anyone holding what is yours. Paruska debakatosiata. Tonight in this place, we overturn. We overturn. We overturn. We overturn until it enters your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here and any family here marked for death, that you will not see the end of December. In the name of Jesus, we cast the spirit of death over your life. I prophesy over your life, whether you are flying in the air, whether you are going on road, whether it is by the sea, be divinely protected in the name of Jesus. Can I pray for your prayer life as I round up? Whatever has destroyed your passion for God, your passion for the ministry of prayer, in the name of Jesus, this night, we set your prayer life on fire again. We set your prayer life on fire again. The grace to pray, the grace to be consistent, the discipline to travel, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your word study life. Whatever has destroyed your passion for the word. In the name of Jesus, let there be restoration this night. Hear me. I want to destroy wrong associations from your life as we round up. Just help those under the anointing. Jonah entered a boat and made people to lose so many things. He didn't talk associations have prophetic implications jesus entered the same boat and yet he saved many people from destruction hallelujah apostle paul was in a boat and he told the people do not fear an angel has appeared to me he has told me there shall be no loss and they went safely and arrived at an island called melita i pray for you anyone who is connected to your destiny who is carrying a negative prophetic atmosphere i separate you from them right now hallelujah finally anyone here and any family here suffering from oppressions connected to ancestry connected to bloodline patterns you are seeing what happened to others coming the bible declares that we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation therefore in the name of jesus be delivered from everything connected to ancestry And for those who are members of House on the Rock Church Enugu, the Bible declares that a worker is deserving of his wages. Your pastor has so honorably honored you. I lend my voice and my faith with your pastor, the angel over this house, and I decree and declare unto you, be blessed in the name of Jesus. 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 Over the territory of Enugu we decree that everything that is not of God we use this meeting as a point of contact to speak to the east of the Niger. Hear the word of the Lord. We decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead there must be peace in your region. 
everything that represents violence, everything that represents bloodshed. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye